My name is John Bosel. I'm the Associate AD for Marketing and Promotions at UMass Lowell. I'm probably the only face that doesn't fit that you're seeing right now. I want to <laughs> our, uh, our first homecoming event from Homecoming from Home and a reunion with our 2005 and 2010 national championship teams. Uh, tonight's Friday Night Lights event is presented by Credit Union. So big thank you to JDCU for their support for not only this event, for Riverhawk Athletics in general. Uh, you'll be able to participate throughout the night. Many of you are in the webinar chat. Uh, the chat is visible to everybody. So if you put something in there, do know that uh, that's for everyone. If you have a <laughs> you want submitted that uh, we, we will take Q&A during the, uh, the panel tonight. You can use the Q&A feature, which is right next to the chat at the bottom. And that's uh, a little less uh, uh, visible, for lack of a better term. Uh, thank you to the Office of Alumni Relations and Heather Allen for putting this together. Um, and uh, we really appreciate it and look forward to tonight. Two other mm -hmm. do have some swag and giveaways. Uh, we have some Riverhawk field hockey attire that uh, Coach Shannon is donating. I don't know if she's wearing it or modeling it. Or <laughs> yeah. No, this is, this is not for sale. <laughs> We've got some, some mini Riverhawk field hockey sticks as well. And uh, we'll give that stuff away. So if you are uh, participating at home, take a picture of yourself, whether it's a selfie or <laughs> screenshot, and share that on social media with hashtag UMLFH, and we'll pick some winners by, before the night's done. With that all being said, <laughs> uh, I'm going to turn it over to Robert Ellis, our host, and uh, hide myself. So I Bob, all right. take it away. Thank you very much, John. Good evening. Welcome. Uh, my name is Bob Ellis, and this is Friday Night Lights. <laughs> Uh, the field hockey championship seasons, I guess we will call it that, as these United States continue to battle a national health crisis. College sports have been put on hold, hopefully temporarily, um, and all of our lives have undergone some sort of change. We hope that uh, Friday Night Lights will help to fill a void, keep you in touch with UMass Lowell Athletics. We hope as well it will provide the opportunity for some fun. Uh, it's a high-tech gathering, and I hope it finds you all safe, healthy, and in good spirits. We will focus tonight on two field hockey national championship seasons, the 2005 and 2010 seasons. Both ended with the same trophy, but the path to that celebration probably would be described best as markedly different and rather unique. <laughs> the first one, one might argue, and I would argue anyway, uh, was about an upstart team with a chip on its shoulder that uh, sent a message to the rest of the country. The second championship probably represented a well-oiled machine, a program that had matured and become a stunning dominant program. We will divide the conversation tonight into two parts, the 2005, 2010 separate. We'll start with 2005, but what I want to do at this point is introduce uh, the entire panel representing both seasons. Representing 2005, uh, and actually it's the captains from that 2005 season, uh, Taylor Kloss Pitzinger. She was, I believe, <laughs> the very first recruit of uh, young coach uh, Shannon <laughs> LeBlanc. Also yeah. with us, Courtney Hill Metcalf, uh, Jocelyn Mraz Wilson, who is currently uh, coaching at Central Catholic High School, and with us as well, Joanna uh, Deleuze Montero, who scored the game-winning goal in double overtime on what's been described as a change-up shot. <laughs> Doesn't matter. Change-ups work for pitchers. They work for scorers as well, I suppose. And again, those were the four captains of this 2005 team. Uh, Deleuze, Mraz and Hill all earned All-America honors that season. And of course, uh, Shannon LeBlanc represents that season as well as 2010. Now, as far as our 2010 panel goes, uh, represented by Sammy Macy, career leader in goals and points. I believe she had 30 goals in that 2010 season, which is just a remarkable number. Uh, Liz Day is with us. She is the current North Andover High School coach. Um, Annie Hansberry with us, the current coach at Stonehill. We've promised to limit our Stonehill talk to a very little, <laughs> and none of it will be complimentary, I imagine. Uh, Katie and Nair had planned to be with us, but work got in the way, uh, such is the case, I guess, in 2020. But I will note as well, Katie and Nair, uh, Fairman, 
also scored 30 goals that season and is one of the just stunningly uh, terrific offensive players that were part of, was part of that team. All four that I mentioned, um, A.C. Day, Hansberry, and Anair, were all Americans. And of course, Shannon Lieberchuk, Shannon LeBlanc. <laughs> the first championship comes in what I believe was her fourth year as the head coach. By the time 2010 comes around, she's a veteran head coach with numerous Coach of the Year honors. All right, that said, uh, let's take a look at 2005. I will say that team finished the year with a 20-3 and three record. But after four games, they were just two and two. I'm not sure they knew what lay ahead of them. They would win their next 16 in a row. Um, the third loss would come in the Northeast 10 championship game, though they didn't really lose. They scored the first goal in overtime. We won't get into that. That's a story for another day, but I thought it should be mentioned if we're going to be fair and honest and accurate. Uh, the Riverhawks would earn uh, their uh, national championship with a 2-1 win first over Stonehill to go to the championship game and then uh, with a double overtime 2-1 win against Bloomsburg University. Bloomsburg was looking for its fourth straight national championship. With that said, we want to show you a little bit of that championship game. This is a piece that was put together by CBS Sports that focused on that game. The Riverhawks are hoping to finally have their day in the sun. They fell short in their previous two tournament runs, and in fact, they've already been down this road. They bowed to Bloomsburg in the 03 title game. You ready for this? Yeah. What you've been working for for the last six months, for the last year, for the last two years. So when you step off this bus, we're all business. This is the best season UMass Lowell has seen in history, absolutely without question. We came here for one thing, to win it. All right, so let's do it. Let's do it. Let's go. Here we go. No regrets. No regrets. No regrets. We got everything on the field. UMass Lowell has its mind on revenge. And they draw first blood. The team's leading scorer strikes. Sarah Hohenberger gives the Riverhawks a 1-0 lead. Bloomsburg's Jan Hutchinson has a record 501 wins to her name. Could number 502 be slipping away? Her Huskies stay on the attack. The Lowell's Nicole Stanny has things covered. At the half, the Riverhawks have the lone goal. We know you're tired. It's going to be all hard. It's going to be who wants it more. Yep, and absolutely. I have a feeling already after the first half, it's you. So now See, you just have to go out and prove it. Okay, this is a disgrace to them. I'm not going to lie. They are just horrified with themselves that they let up one goal. Okay, but we're pumped up and we're not done. This yes. is well within our reach. It is ours to keep going. Ours to go. In the second half, Bloomsburg keeps up the pressure, but Stady is still up to the task. The tension mounts. Another overtime period beckons. We're You have won enough for two overtimes playing for a national championship. A national championship. And when you step back out on the field, I want you to feel it. Okay, I want you to imagine what it's going to feel like to win this game. Okay, and do what you need to do to get it done. Answers their coach's challenge in the 92nd minute. Joanna Deleuze nets the golden goal. Lowell clinches its first ever field hockey title. How did it feel watching that? So good. Oh my God. <laughs> now this, uh, I, you know, Shannon, she's speaking. This is why we've come here. When you began that season as players, was this on your radar or do you not look that far ahead at that point? No, I mean, I, can I jump in. Yeah, no, I definitely, I mean, I don't think at the beginning of the season, it was on our radar to win a national championship. I think we just wanted to, 
bring together. I mean, in my like, I just felt like we need to bring together. Remember, we had the sink the ship. We were like, Shippensburg is coming, and we got to sink the ship. I feel like all along we kind of had that like mantra of like, we need to end up there. We need to get there. I felt like it just built and built, and then yeah. we finally I remember being there. Was like being the ship, and then we're like, yeah. "Oh, Shippensburg didn't make it." Okay, Bloomsburg. All right. Yeah. <laughs> yeah we are. Almost like we just kept getting better and better, and we yeah. almost like surprised ourselves at like how good we were like along the way. But it's like yeah. the first like preseason, like preseason, we weren't like that wasn't our goal necessarily. It was like let's just build our team and see where we yeah. go. After four <laughs> games, though, you're two and two. Were there any self doubts, or you guys just believed and? and you knew that if you kept doing what you were supposed to do, this could happen. I mean, I think, Bob, I'll jump in. I think, you know, that two and Please two. Please do. We were very young, believe it or not. That, that uh, national championship team in 2005, you know, the four seniors are sitting here tonight of that team. But I believe we had 10 or 11 freshmen. So, you know, for I think that's a, a, a stat that's overlooked that this group that's on the screen right now really had a lot of responsibility um, in, in sort of mentoring that young group, but also while playing, you know, some of the best field hockey that Lowell has ever seen. So I think it, I think that the start of the season was just getting to know each other, kind of bringing the young, younger players up to speed. Um, and then once we, I think, got, you know, going, there was, like you said, we just kept getting better and better and there was really no stopping us at that point. Did you know when you put this team together, okay, you, there are all these freshmen, you brought in 10 freshmen. Did you imagine in your mind if all these pieces fit in, we can win a national championship? You'd been to national championship games in the past, so I think you probably had an idea of what it took. Yeah, I think overall, though, it, I mean, and it's no offense to the freshmen. I think we had a couple in the field, but we really played that season with about 11, 12 players. If Can I interject too, Shannon's not a good, not really good at substituting um, <laughs> learn that early on. Um, so I didn't really l learn that art. I'm still learning that as 20, I'm going into my 20th year. Um, so we put a lot of pressure on 12 to 13 players that year, but that's okay because that younger group got a lot of exposure and they were great, you know, once this class graduated too. So, uh, but it was certainly on the backs of 12 to 13 players um, that did a lot of the, the game work, obviously. No. Can I just say too, we also, Shannon, do you remember we changed our format? So because of who you were having out on the field, I mean, we did a 3-3, three, 2-2, three, two, two, I don't even know. <laughs> like, I remember in preseason you saying, listen, this is what it is and we're changing it. So we can also attribute the first couple games is just like kind of learning that new format. I mean, there's not a lot of people that only throw three forwards on that offensive line and then hang back with like a square defensive unit. So she changed a lot of like, if you're a defender, now you're kind of a mid. If you're a mid, you might be a high, uh, like a low forward, high back. I mean, there was a lot of stuff that we, we changed. So that I think... Mm -hmm. Even though you're saying, you know, we did have a solid like 12 to 13, but we, you changed our format to highlight those 12, you know, those 12 mm -hmm. to 13. So, but yeah, we did, that was our first year at that new um, formation. That worked well. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so, let me ask uh, that senior group. Um, it's, your, it's your last season. You'd been to a couple of championship games and had not necessarily gotten the final score you were looking for. Did you, was there some self-imposed pressure uh, that you said, this is the year we've got to do it or our collegiate careers come to an end without that prize? I think, I mean, I'll just talk first. I don't feel like it was all this pressure, like we failed or anything, but I do think that we had been there so many times um, to host against Bloomsburg, um, you know, two years prior, just to kind of see how far the program had progressed so quickly. It was just like, this is within our reach. And we really, I, I almost feel like it was like the first year too that we kind of play, paid attention to the Pennsylvania conference. And we like were watching the stats and watching the teams and, you know, just really trying to be dominant again. I mean, one of my shirts, it was like, we had the back-to-back -back and 10 champs. So we did, we just wanted to keep riding that high and we just wanted to keep you know, just making it as far as we could and knowing that at the end of the day, if we played the best that we could, you know, you can't get mad if you play the best you can. So I think that that was the pressure that we had, like as a unit every day, let's play the best that we can. I yeah. see jo Joanna, I saw you shaking your head, jump right in. 
Well, I, I agree with Jocelyn. I think that once we got there and that we were sitting there and watching the game before us, then I remember turning around to whoever it was and saying, we can win. Like, this is totally within our reach. We can win. These, they're not as good as us, and we're going to win. Because shipping's burden lost. Yes. So, <laughs> I was like, we can totally do this now. Come on. <laughs> But I remember, like, you asked earlier, Bob, like, we, we had, a, um, like, a score of two, two and two, like, at the beginning of the season, and I remember, like, walking onto the field and being like, oh, man, like, are we going to, like, keep losing? Like, is this, this is not going to be a good season. Like, I remember having that fear, and I was like, oh, it's our senior year. So I think because it was our senior year, it was that pressure, like, we didn't want to, like, keep losing, you know what I mean? But it was like, it definitely, like, we just kind of, like, pulled our crap together like after those two losses and was like no we are not going to be that team like we are not going to go out like this and just yeah just came together mm -hmm. you know we can look in, and see what the stats say and we can look at box scores to learn about games but i've got to think there's something else involved here that makes a team successful i don't know if you've ever kind of sat back and said why were we successful but is there kind of that secret ingredient that makes the difference Oh, for sure. I mean, 100%. I mean, personalities, um, obviously, st strengths and weaknesses. Like, I, I mean, it, we've all been on a bad team before. I'm not saying at UMass Lowell, but whether it's at work or whether um, it, it's a friendship dynamic, um, you know, there's just some some people that, they're, that their personalities and everything just works right and everything gels. And I think that this team, that just happened. It was, it was magic. It was great. I think too we just had a lot of grit we were just like we didn't get subbed we were just like ruthless and I mean we weren't we always played I, sometimes I was yeah. as good as you but I mean, no, so, but I just okay. we had to like fight and we had to battle and we always really focused on like clean nice hockey um and mm -hmm. I just you know, so I feel like the grittiness though, and I, you know, some teams, if you don't have that grittiness, if you don't have that fight, if you kind of just think like, oh, well, we're this team, so we should win. We didn't have that. We were always battling. So I think like that, that grit kind of added to it too. Now, now Taylor said something there about you develop a personality. How would you describe that personality? Would, can you give it a name? And then any one of you, I, well, I pick up on what Taylor had said, any one of you, is there a particular couple of words you'd use to describe what became the team's personality? And maybe grit is the word. Work hard, play hard. <laughs> it just felt right. I don't know. It just, it was right. It was, um, I don't know. I like the word magic these days. It just felt um, like we just gelled. I don't know. Our chemistry. We all we had a great chemistry. Yeah. <laughs> Thank you, Corey. <laughs> <laughs> we, had fun, we had fun off the field, but when we were on the field, we were all determined. We all had the same work ethic. So I think mm. we would battle each other. Taylor, do you remember me and you going <laughs> at it like on, like she's offense, I'm defense. And we would literally be like, you're not going to get, we didn't want to go against you. We were very scared. Battle each other. <laughs> and they would be like, hey, good play. <laughs> like, just yeah. battling. Like we were so competitive with each other yeah. in practice too, which I feel like sometimes teams don't do because they don't want to hurt their teammate. And we didn't want to hurt our teammates, but we were like, no, you have to practice how you play. Yeah, yeah sorry. Um, no, I think oh, yeah. that was just an aggressive comment that was made. Um, by Jamar. Who yeah. is this person? That's okay. Let's just focus. Don't look at that, please. Um, yeah. You guys don't that. Um, No, um, so I think... Say, go, go ahead, Shin. Oh, sorry. No, I, I do want to say I think... The biggest difference to um, of the 2005 team is that if we looked at the roster, it was mostly local, you know, Massachusetts players that all had that same sort of attitude. They've all come in from a, a solid high school program, but I think all of them and all of you had something to prove. And I, and I think mm -hmm. for me every day as their coach, they were trying to prove themselves. I think they were really, really committed in, in raising the level of, of hockey, raising the level of, of how UMass Lowell was perceived. Um, they, they took a chance on us. And I do think, you know, sometimes they have to be reminded that they took a chance on us. We were, we were a young program. We were new, um, you know, a young coach that, you know, probably gave, lied to them a lot, you know, promised, made promises that I don't know if I really could have kept. 
but they bought into something I think that they had a vision of. I think they were visionaries and they don't give themselves enough credit, but I think they all, and they still continue to this day, to be visionaries. They see great things on a lot of people in their jobs and their families and their children. Um, and it's like, that hasn't changed. So for me, you know, obviously it's 2005 or 15 years later, it's pretty amazing and remarkable, you know, that I can still say they were visionaries back when they, they committed to UMass Lowell, which is longer than, you know, 15 years ago. It's about 19, 20 for some, um, and, and that hasn't changed. So I do think they they had they had a plan in mind and they were gonna and they were gonna put it to work. I'm gonna ask Taylor. Uh, Shannon Lee Bichuk is, is comes and recruits you. You're her first recruit. What's yeah. going through your mind as this person that you know little about doesn't have a long coaching resume, in fact knocks on your door and says, "I want you to come play at UMass Lowell." Well, she, I remember she came to, I played in Topps Field at the sports arena, the winter arena there. And she, I remember her coming to the game and I think you were sitting next to my mom or dad or someone. Your and mother was, your mother was hard to convince, but I did it. I know. I'm trying to get my, get Kim on the line here, but she doesn't know how to log in. So, but I'm going to give her a hard time later. Um. But I, I remember her calling me and being like, you know, I was having those like early on conversations. I was 18. I was like, oh, it's my birthday and I'm going to hang out with my boyfriend or something. Like, it was just like, I was so naive in a way. I think like at that age, I was just so excited that someone asked me to play field hockey and I was going to get, you know, somewhat of a scholarship. And it was just an amazing opportunity. And I felt like it all the work I had done had paid off and I was really excited um, to go to UMass Lowell. Um, so I was, I mean, I think I was just excited. I almost, I don't think I knew I was the first recruit. I mean, I don't think Shannon like filled me in on that. Would it have made any difference? Uh, no. Good to hear. Now, yeah. <laughs> when, when I introduced the 2005 season or back in the introduction, I mentioned it as a team of the chip on its shoulder. One thing that I remember being around the university at the time was there seemed to be this motivation of we're the public school kids against the private school kids. <laughs> we're the kids that the other schools didn't want. Is that just my imagination or was there no. something to that? <laughs> no. I wouldn't say though that it was they didn't want us. Um, I think that we fit better with UMass now. And I think that it kind of came down to like, just, you're not better than us just because you pay more in tuition. <laughs> so, we literally had the same professors at UMass School as some of the other schools. So that's what it was. <laughs> did, did that take, I mean, I described you guys as having a chip on your shoulder. Did you have a chip on your shoulder or was I way off base with that? Oh, no, we definitely did. <laughs> I think I still do. I don't like yeah. no, we did. <laughs> That's so classic. Tips for life. <laughs> I don't feel like we did. I'm saying that loud. I don't feel like we had a chip on our shoulder. I don't. I know Josh got it. It's not a bad chip. I just think we were like, you're not, I don't know. Not better. Well, enough. you know. Yeah, no, I agree. You're right. Yeah. Well, I mean, I think too the two the the semifinal or the final game in the NE10 championship certainly was a catalyst, and we definitely had a chip on our shoulder after that situation. So yeah. I do think there was a lot to be said um, about that sort of um, miss. Um, I don't know. I don't. I don't. I'm gonna. Use, I don't want to use improper words, but. Obviously, we were declared co-champions um, due to an, an umpire oversight of how to actually um, apply the rule. Um, so I think after that, um, the chip was real solid uh, because we were meeting that same team again um, after they won their play-in game for the for the tournament. We were meeting them at the national championship. So certainly, for, prior to the the game against Bloomsburg. Um, we had a chip on our shoulder for that semifinal game. 
and then I will say I got a couple of questions that were, were sent in by various people. Um, may have covered some of this, but I will say Adrian Mendoza asks, <laughs> what motivational catchphrase did you steal from Coach Shannon that you use on your kids, your partner, your dog? Um, and I will let you guys handle that. I suspect somebody knows more than I know on this one. But is there a catchphrase you picked up from the coach that you found yourself using in everyday life? 2010, you can answer, but don't. <laughs> okay. I mean, or get on the line. <laughs> get it done. I feel like that's something Shannon would say, like, get it done. I don't know. Uh, right. you know I, was very, I was very colorful back then, Bob. So the there's a lot that is said in here. <laughs> Okay. Not a lot that can be repeated. Maybe we'll uh, maybe we'll let the 2010 people handle that when we get to them. So now you're playing in the national championship game. You've played 70 minutes of field hockey, and it has not yet been decided. You're headed to overtime. Aside from what the coach may have said to you, what's going through your mind at that point? Is there a, a thought of, I'm going to score the winner, or is there a thought of, I don't want to be the one that makes the mistake that puts the <laughs> – a uh, ball on the back of our net. Kind of what was the mindset? Tell me what was going through your minds um, at that point. Then I'll ask Shannon that question as well. But players, what are you thinking at that point? Headed to overtime. Just play as hard as you can. I mean, I think when it got into double overtime, I was, um, well, how many is in double overtime? How many people are in overtime? Six, seven, Shin? Yeah, seven v seven. Yeah. Seven v seven. So I wasn't one of the seven. I was on the side. I was taking a break, which is cool. I was standing no. there. To, me and Heather were locking arms, and so I just was. I was just so like, ex, like I don't know, just so excited and just anxious for what was going to happen. But like the whole game, it was just like just play as hard as you possibly can. And like I remember Jocelyn saying to you one point, she's like, "We're playing for a national championship," and I was like, "Oh my god, you're right! Like let's go!" Like it would just. <laughs> No, and I think that like energy was contagious. Oh, go ahead, Tay. No, keep going. Because I feel I don't, you were definitely in the game because when you – I was kind of exhausted and just being like, man, we made it this far. That is great. I'm so <laughs> tired. Yeah. And walking out, and all of a sudden, Kayla comes and she says, grabs me. And I don't know if you remember this, Tay, but you do. No. And you said, I've never wanted anything more in my life. And I said, <laughs> holy crap. And I have a lot of respect for the team. I'm like, she's never wanted anything more than her life. All right, I have to get, get it together and let's go. So I think that it was just a yeah. lot of respect. And yeah. I just thought we have to hold on. But then when she said that, I was like, okay. Yeah, let's dig deep. Let's do dig it. deeper. And I think we kind of all motivated each other with that stuff that, you know, Josh said and Joe said on court. I'm sure you've got something. Someone I'm, said I'm so you. physically exhausted that I can't <laughs> breathe. Yeah. <laughs> so, I think I asked for a sub at one yeah. second. Um, I just wanted to finish it. I just wanted to get it done. So. Yeah. yeah and then we probably had a concussion, and yeah. I am legal now, but yeah. I'm pretty sure I was like, I'm good. This is the present. This is the time. And I, <laughs> and I was like, and I'm in because like, we're not losing. We just came to double overtime. Like, let's go. That's right. my quote. Let's go. That's yeah. what I do. <laughs> yeah, and I think that, you know, we have, uh, you know, Kim Valer was our, our center at the time, and, and she was relentless. Yes. Mm -hmm. yes. She didn't say any words, so hi, Kim, if you're out there. But she did not stop at that, in that center mid person is just the one that just really has to be the glue. And I really think she just kept everyone motivated. Sarah Ho, our leading scorer, was taped up. Jocelyn has a concussion. <laughs> breathe. Taylor would never want anything. Joe's like, I'm in field hockey blackout. Like <laughs> things were happening all at once, but I do think they were all connected with that chemistry and that synergy that they were not going to let each other down. So they're in their mind. There was no, no way out, but winning. And I just, I really think that connection that they had for the last four years, especially these four in, in the underclassmen bought into that. And it was just, like Tay said, magic. And magic happened when a group came together and said, we're not, we're not letting anything else happen except for a win. Now, Shannon, you're, on, you're a coach, but you're on the sidelines. I mean, you can't go out there and make a pass or a defensive play. 
what is a coach thinking about when you're playing overtime? Can you do much coaching at that point? I don't know if there was a lot of coaching at that point. I mean, you heard uh, Carrie Dudley, our, our longtime assistant, um, you know, give that little speech. And I think she was like our, our motivator, all of ours. I, I think I was, I retreated and, and, and was really just praying, honestly, for a win because I know how hard the team works. So I think I, I go to that place and just say, let something really, really good happen to them. And then Carrie was probably on the sideline in just, you know, saying all the, all the positive mantra things. Um, but, you know, I, I did feel like this group was special. So I, I did, I, I think, I never, I'm not gonna lie. Did I expect to win a national championship so early on? No, but then when this group came in, I said, yeah, I think we can do it. And that, and that day it didn't change. I really felt super confident in them through the entire overtime. We just, we needed a break and our break was that corner. And, you know, you saw it, it was an, almost like a miss hit. Oh, everyone's exhausted and, and Joanna still made magic happen. And, and I just think that summed that team up. They were just going to make anything happen. Even if it wasn't perfect, they were going to make something happen. And I think, you know, it sets them apart. A lot of teams, you know, sets them apart from a lot of teams because they never were poor me's. They never felt bad for themselves. They never, you know, sunk into this place after semi or the championship game at the end. And they were just motivated every single day. And it was, and obviously the culmination was, was the national championship. All right, let's get to that overtime game winning goal. And Joanna, I'm going to ask you to describe uh, that goal. And I think we're going to be able to show the goal though from a different angle than we saw it before, but uh, Take your time and, and, and uh, tell me what was going through your mind um, as we watched that goal that decided it. This is, yeah, the ball is not coming out very well. Sarah Ho is going to get it, gives it to me. I don't really know what I'm doing, but. <laughs> and uh, I remember running to Jocelyn. I turned and ran to Jocelyn. And I ran to you. <laughs> One of the best hugs of my life. Uh, <laughs> Was now? I mean, was it a designed play? Who no, decides I, what you're I, gonna do off the corner? Usually, I stopped the ball on the corner or did a little dish. I did not usually receive the ball or really, for that matter, go into the circle very much. So, <laughs> somebody <laughs> told me strange. that. Somebody told me that you did not necessarily have the strongest shot on the team. Oh. Mm, no, not at all. And my Don't drive is that. horrendous. It always has been. It always will be. And that was my best attempt. It was a darn good attempt, I got to tell you. No one's going to quibble with that. So now you guys are all celebrating. I mean, you shot. Did you think when it left your stick, that's going in? Or you're as, no, just watching it like everybody else? No, because I didn't score a lot of goals. I was looking for someone to get a rebound, something to happen. I was, did not think I was going to score, no. So then the celebration takes place. Um, I, I, you know, we saw some of that on the video and I don't know, there was probably more celebrating on the field after that and you get awarded the national championship trophy. What are you guys thinking is this trophy is yours? What's going through your mind at that moment? Is this real life? <laughs> I mean, I do want to go back to the fact that even as like a, a, a defender, like someone in the backfield watching it, I mean, <laughs> it was like, what is, oh my God. It was like, it's almost so like slow-mo because you dribble yeah. so much I and mean, you slow-mo. Yeah, like as a post player on the defensive corner, like those have gone over my stick and you like hate it. So I was literally like, I remember watching it like bouncing, bouncing. Oh my God, it's under her foot. Holy God. And it, it, like, it didn't even hit the backboard. I don't know. We <laughs> Is this real life? And then we were all dead, exhausted. Yeah. But all of a sudden, we're hoisting a trophy. We're like pig piling. We're hugging. We're crying. Running to our parents. I mean, it was just like it was just amazing. And then we I all think that fell another thing on the fourteen-hour ride home. Well, not me because I probably had a concussion, so I, I had to. Like, yeah. <laughs> we were was expecting there to be all sorts of people in the parking lot. To remember that, like everyone's gonna be waiting for us. It's gonna be like <laughs> nobody was there. I was gonna say the. <laughs> The bus ride back home must have been a, just a, a constant celebration, I would think. No, because we couldn't go over 45. It took like 14 hours. Like, how you luckily the track team like wrote a really nice note on our door. They're like, congratulations on your national championship. 
<laughs> when we got back to the dorms. But no, yeah, Taylor, everyone was like, we're like, where are the parades like in high school? <laughs> no one. We probably yeah, not. Bob, I think too, it, it, you know, Taylor mentioned it and in, in we didn't have a tremendous amount of fans down at Bloomsburg. We had the, our hardcore people that traveled down um, that got to witness history. That's what I say. We have, um, we had a couple of, or a few alums die hard from the 2000, um, uh, four team yes. that joined us down there and, and they brought a lot of energy and, and maybe some stress because we couldn't find them before the game. They weren't in the stands, but that's for another day. <laughs> Abby, all, Abby, if you're out there. Um, and then, so we, we had, we had a group of fans, but we probably only had about 15 people in the stands to witness this. Like parents. Yeah. 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 Bloomsburg was, their side was full. We, we definitely, yeah. We definitely stunned that crowd, um, but this group wasn't about, you know, it, it didn't, I, to me, it, it, that did not matter. They did not need that big, you know, that big group. They were really in it for their teammates and, and they, it was, it was awesome, but I was kind of sad when I looked over and there's only like five people jumping. <laughs> That's, all know, we like, That's all we needed. That's all we needed. But I think, I think, Bob, one of the biggest things, and I find myself talking about this now in the current day, and that I'll be proud to tell my kids is that it was the first women's national championship yes. at UMass Lowell. And that is something that, like, is, I'm just so proud of. And that, like, I tell people all the time, I still wear my ring. I almost <laughs> lost it one time. Oh, gosh. <laughs> But I still got it. And um, that's that's something I think we were really proud of. That was like, wow, we have brought this to the university. And this is something that um, is in the history books. And that was mm -hmm. really special. Yeah. And this, this team, I would imagine, as well as the 2010 team, are the foundation upon which uh, the university was able to say, yeah, let's go Division One in all sports. Uh, I have long- I don't know if I want to thank you for that. I'm not, I'm not quite <laughs> sure I'm sending out thank you cards for that one. <laughs> you know what, though? Uh, I, I, look, the, the story has not been fully written yet. I suspect the final <laughs> chapters will be absolutely uh, terrific. I will note for those who aren't aware of it, the 2005 team has been inducted into uh, the university's Hall of Fame. Uh, the 2010 team actually would have gone in this year. There's a 10-year waiting period. Um, COVID has made that impossible. But while they are not yet in the Hall of Fame, they will be, I guess, at the first opportunity that is uh, presented. I do want to shift gears a at this point. Um, we certainly don't want to forget the 2010 team. We've enjoyed talking about 2005. Hopefully those on the panel will stay with us. But let's take a look at that 2010 season. It was, as we've heard, uh, people refer to it as perfection or the perfect season. The team went 24 and 0. They were led by a group of seniors uh, that had been probably the best ever recruiting class at the school. Uh, they scored a goals by the truckload. I think I added it up. I think the team scored 119 goals while allowing only eight goals during the season. That's eight goals in 24 games. There were 17 shutouts. Um, they beat Stonehill six to one to win. Sorry, Stonehill uh, beat Stonehill six to one to win the Northeast Ten title. Uh, beat the Mike. What was it? A week later, five to one in the national semifinal to get to the championship game, and uh, then took the trophy with a one nothing victory against. Finally, they finally got to sink the ship. Uh, they beat Shippensburg in 2010, a one nothing final. It didn't take overtime. Um, so again, congratulations uh, to that group. Uh, in this case, we're, we're talking about, at least on our panel, Liz Day, who scored the game-winning goal, Sammy Macy, who had a phenomenal year, and um, Annie Hansberry, who helped anchor the defensive core. And, you know, the thing is, and, and I, re I guess I kind of remember it more vividly because I don't I, – Look, I'm me. I don't see all the subtleties to field hockey. And I love teams that score goals. That makes headlines. That was great. The thing the national championship game reminded me of, we weren't just the best offensive team. We were the best defensive team that you could find anywhere in the country. And uh, that's what will stand out in my education about field hockey. But what stands out was how good this team was at both ends of the field. Anyway, yeah. Perfect season. Sammy Macy, Liz, Annie, when you when the season began, did you feel like we've got it in ourselves to run the table 
to go out and win every time we go on the field. <laughs> yeah, absolutely. I mean, from day one, our expectations were set very high. And, you know, I think that that molded our mindset every day that we just worked a little bit harder. Um, we just gave a little bit more because um, we knew after, you know, being a senior that year, the first three years we lost in the national championship. So that made us even hungrier. Like we, we never were assuming, we never were over cocky, but we knew what we wanted and we came every day to accomplish that for sure. Yes, well said, Liz. <laughs> <laughs> um, yeah, I mean, I echo what she said completely. I mean, being in the national championship game for three years in a row, being so close to tasting the victory, it was just so tough. Um, you know, just losing it at the very end. So it's like, if we didn't go out with a win um, senior year, then that stinks. <laughs> um, but yeah, <laughs> I don't know. I think, I don't, I didn't expect to go 24 and 0, that's for sure. But um, we did. And we just kept kept on rolling. So uh, I look I totally forward to expected to go 24 and 0 with yep. your group, by the way. No. I mean, I was going to say too, like, it was an expectation. <laughs> I don't know. I, I disagree. I don't think 24, no. We always have like a, a bad, yeah. we always have a bad game. Shout out to Babson. <laughs> and yeah, we, did, that, yeah. we did have a bad game that no one knows about because it didn't count. We didn't. <laughs> oh, what was that? No. Fill us in. Oh, do tell. Babson. Why don't, why don't you tell them what happened after too? I don't think I remember what happened after. You got us like fast food. No, we we still went out as a team to eat, but we had a split. I think like ten dollars or something between like two people. <laughs> I'll tell the real story. Okay. Every table got one pizza, and they weren't allowed rolls at Bertucci's. <laughs> no rolls. I don't think I remember that. Yeah, no, like, you wouldn't. You, that's you don't want to remember that day. You don't want to remember that day. I that day and the music that I made my van listen to on the way home does anyone remember that it was really really bad like 70s like depressing <laughs> music like, if this is what you want your season to be then this is <laughs> one yeah. scrimmage and that was smooth sailing from there now uh, Shannon I'd said that the, the senior class that you may be what was the best recruiting class that you ever uh, put together when you're putting that recruiting class together, did you, were you thinking this is the class that can bring us a championship? Absolutely. I mean, there was no, no question in my mind. When I, you know, I look at Liz Day and, and Sammy on the screen, I, Annie was in that next class. Um, but when I recruited Liz Day and Sammy and Jamie Hadley in there um, and, and Lizzie Aulis and, you know, Amy Carbon, and, and I'm going to miss some because that class was huge. I mean, Corinne Schultz out in California. Um, no, she's, <laughs> but, hi Corinne, thanks for joining us. Um, we had a tremendous, that whole class that came in with Sammy and Liz, they were special, Jamie Hadley, you know, and they were all local. Again, another local group and they all knew each other and they were all somewhat a little bit rivalry. You know, they, have, uh, they had a rivalry in some cases um, and I convinced them, I was like, listen, I get it. You all want to be rivals in softball and field hockey you know, in the MVC, Cape Ann League. But if you all come to Lowell, we'll win a national championship. I promise. Again, I'm, I, I make these promises. I don't, sometimes they come to fruition. Um, but they all got in. And when they all committed, I was like, I care, it's done. Yeah, and I can't, I can't, I, di I literally felt that because I couldn't believe they all committed. I, I will, that was a dream. To be honest with you, it was a it was a, a, a class that was a class that from top to bottom, position to position, um, were just really probably on the brink of Division One players too. They all of them had a little bit of interest, and I just said, "Come and have fun at UMass Lowell. We'll have a great time, and we'll win. We'll win a lot. You like to win." So I think the winning part really, uh, I think, um, sold them. I mean, Sammy was a little late to the party, wanted to like make me wait until like mid of her senior year, but it, she was well worth the wait. So it all worked out. Uh, well, let me ask Sammy, what, how tough a decision was it for you? I didn't know what I was doing. <laughs> um, so like many, 
seniors. Uh, you just, I don't know. It's not really something wasn't on the top of my to-do list. And, <laughs> you know, I just, I applied to one school when it all came down to it. I applied to UMass Lowell Ooh. and I was like, you know what? It was the best decision I ever made. So everything happens for a reason. <laughs> I'm happy about that. So I'm so happy with the decision to go to UMass Lowell. Yeah. Seriously, though, mm -hmm. um, Division two is the best decision, and UMass Lowell is the best place for me. So. Let me tell you, now, I, I fouled up here in that I wanted to play video. I wanted to have video played of the 2010 championship game right at the beginning of this. Instead, I began asking questions and thought I was the superstar. But <laughs> let, let us pause for a second here. Take a look at what um, the way CBS uh, put together their piece following the 2010 championship game. A bit of winter weather strikes Kentuckiana, sending the grounds crew at the site of the Women's Field Hockey Championships into a clearing frenzy. The undefeated UMass Lowell Riverhawks know that defense will be what it takes to win the title. They've been on the losing end of the championship game for the past three years. But the Ship Raiders are just as hungry after making it to the semi seven of the last eight years. This is their first trip to the big game. Shippensburg starts off fast, but true to form, the Riverhawks buckle down with defense, and the Raiders can't find the back of the net. On their first penalty corner of the game, 22 minutes into the first half, the Riverhawks make the most of the opportunity. UMass Lowell takes the 1-0 lead into the halftime, and Shippensburg knows time is running out. For the second half, the Raiders come out looking to strike, but UMass Lowell sticks their title hopes on their goalie, Melanie Hopkins. She turns away a staggering 13 shots. The Riverhawks knew all along defense for the championships. Finally, the UMass Lowell Riverhawks can revel in their perfect season, a 24-0 record. And for the seven seniors on the team, the championship they've worked for their entire careers. All right, forgive me for not showing that earlier, um, but, but now let me ask, and they mentioned um, goaltender Melanie Hopkins, but the other thing that stood out, I thought, and, and at that time, I remember watching the game back in the office in Costello, um, was some of the defensive plays made by some other individuals <laughs> at the time. It, it, with all due respect to Melanie Hopkins, it was absolutely <laughs> terrific. She, it wasn't a one-person show, that's for sure. <laughs> Annie, you're going to take this because you're. <laughs> I'm yeah. setting this up for you, yeah. Annie. Yeah, Annie, Sarah, Kila, Lydia. Yeah, I mean, it was 100% a team effort back there. Kayla Lang is just like a beast. Kayla. Yeah. So. <laughs> I think just that mentality of this ball's not going in the back of the net from day one of our season. <laughs> Jamie Hadley, I mean, that defensive unit was just solid. It was just like. It was just intense. You'd look down. I mean, I feel like if I was playing against them, I'd be like, who are these people? Liz Day, right in that corner, like the um, the rush out there, just like relentless. Maniac. <laughs> Don't you guys wear pages now, Shan? <laughs> what, what do you wear? wear? No, like, face, yeah, like, masks. Yeah, oh, no masks. No masks for this crew. body we part was just everywhere. I'm sure we didn't even wear mouth guards. <laughs> they, yeah, I think, no, you guys definitely used to not wear your masks and then get carded in the middle of the game. Remember this one that we don't, I know they, this crew, Bob, of 2010, they were not inter interested in equipment, no masks, no gloves, shin guards, maybe, I think most of them oh. were those, mouth guards, constantly being yelled at by the officials. They were just, they were unafraid. They were, they were, was it, were What year was face masks required? I don't right. know. They're not required. It's just a choice of personal safety now. Okay. Yeah, they're not in college. It's just like on the corner. You okay, a lot more people wear them. Okay. Yeah. yeah. You talk about the toughness. I always remember thinking, and I knew Sammy Macy played um, ice hockey as well. I always felt as though, and you can answer the same, but I always thought you brought kind of an ice hockey mentality to field <laughs> hockey. Was it the attitude or? <laughs> yeah, that was part of it. Um, yeah, I mean, I think... Growing up, I played like every sport, softball um, and hockey definitely attributed a lot to the skills, I would say, wouldn't you agree, Liz? 
um, with a uh, field hockey. And yeah, I don't know. I just think I had had a competitive edge <laughs> back then. Now, Liz, Ben, you scored. Wait, she, no, she, I was going to say it's not, right competitive edge. it's not there anymore, <laughs> but it's, it was, <laughs> It was, uh, it was definitely there in, in college. I bet it's still in there. I bet it has to be in there. It's there. <laughs> oh, yeah. It's there. <laughs> that? Now, Liz Day, you scored the only goal of that, of that <laughs> game. Take me through that. And, and unfortunately, we don't have video from another <laughs> angle to be able to show it again. But That's fine. It was not an impressive shot. It I looked, it looked impressive to me. <laughs> Thread the needle, back of the net. Look, as long as it ends up in the back of the net, you're far ahead of anybody else. Remember, nobody else scored that day. But take me through the goal from your perspective. All right. Well, it was not the original corner, that's for sure, because the day before she <laughs> down in that corner, we were not supposed to run lol to. Um, it was most definitely supposed to be a straight-up shot Sammy, because that's like the money shot. Give the <laughs> Sammy in the circle, and it's going to be a goal. So she read the defense. They came out pretty quick, and Lowell, two was the dish right. Again, Shannon shut down this corner the day before at practice. That corner. (laughs) 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 So Sammy read the defense, passed it off, and, you know, I took a semi-decent shot, but it was enough, enough to get the job done. That's all I can say about it. And then we just ran off the field, and we were like, Lowell, two. Shannon, Honestly, you're lucky that went in. Shannon, I like your names were low you, know, you can't say some of the names of our of our corners. No. <laughs> yeah. hey, maybe that was why you were saying lock it up. Yeah, yeah. lock it up. So classy. <laughs> yeah. I mean, lock it up. They were probably like, we're running Lowell two today, Shannon. We're gonna do it anyway. Okay. Now, now, well. Shannon, you've got a number of Coach of the Year trophies lining the walls, and all I keep hearing is that they do what you don't want them to do. <laughs> That's the secret to success, Bob, that no one knows. Just let them do what they want. And as long as it gets done, I'm happy. When it doesn't work out, then they can tell you the stories of those times. <laughs> That's, there's, no there's, a, there's a thing called Torture Tuesday. <laughs> Military Monday. <laughs> <It was> Military <laughs> Monday back in the day. <laughs> Yes. There's a few, there was a few ways that, you know, when it didn't work out for national championships, what behind, what went on behind. Stu's crew. <laughs> yeah, Stu's crew. Stu's crew. Year. Right. Stu's crew. Our, our trust oh, yeah. Stuart used to run a very early morning crew um, that oh, didn't yeah. really reach what they were supposed to reach for, um, I guess, times on various fitness tests. Sometimes time doesn't matter on fitness. <laughs> <laughs> what is it, Stu's crew? <laughs> Don't give my current team any ideas, please. They're oh, there. You oh, guys no. are awesome. Yeah. <laughs> it's, it's, it's Isabel texted me. <laughs> Isabel, uh, who's you're on your current team, she's my intern. They're all watching. <laughs> Isabel, oh, hi. They're awesome. Yeah. They're the best. Yeah. I asked this I question. I probably should have been in better shape. <laughs> <laughs> Wait, Sammy, you were on Stu's crew? <laughs> no I'm way. The thing that Shan said to me is, you're lucky you're a freshman. <laughs> because I came in very, 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 very out of shape. <laughs> and then, like, and then Duds was like our therapist. She was like always calmed everything down. It was like, guys, Shannon's just having a bad day. She's like the mean parent today. I'm gonna like help you. And then um, Stu would instigate. Stu would be like, look at this one. Yeah. She's crawling over the end line, Shan. What are you gonna do? I'm like, I'll kick her and heal her to her. <laughs> there it is. Yeah. Oh, the coaching cool. staff in, in 2000 in 2005 and 10, like there was, was a good, you know, chemistry amongst the staff too. So I think that helped with the with the team. So we had a lot of balance. I've got to ask, and I suppose uh, this can go to either team, but we're talking to the 2010 team at the moment. Is there a, one thing that you remember most about the season? Aside from the championship game, I know we all remember the championship game, but are there, is there one other moment that stands out, whether it took place on the field, on the practice field, off the field altogether? I can't wait to hear this answer. Not all night. You look like, Annie looks like you're thinking um, of something. There was one moment, and I think it was a, a defining moment for us, and <laughs> we were playing in the rain against Southern Connecticut, and Shan proceeded to tell us that it was 70 and sunny. 
And Sammy dribbled at least two yards out of bounds and kept playing. And she ended up scoring. And that was just the moment of like, just keep playing is where, you know, that I think came from. <laughs> hey, how did you guys like playing in, in what was uh, very un Louisville like weather? As I recall, there was some snow in the air. It was cold. It was nasty. Uh, what was that like? It's just another game. <laughs> Louisville was definitely very cold, but it wasn't the worst that we've ever played. And I specific, I don't remember which game it was, but it was definitely at home. I don't even know if it was senior or junior year. I came off, it was like a freezing rain and I was just, you know, so Louisville wasn't as bad, but there were definitely some conditions that we played in that were less than ideal. But yeah. showed in a couple games. Yeah. <laughs> I want to go back to a question I asked earlier. This was one that came from Adrian Mendoza. And I think somebody at the time commented that it was probably directed at the 2010 team. So I will uh, read it word for word as it was presented, which was, what motivational catchphrase <laughs> did you steal from Coach Shannon that you use on your kid's partner dog? I have a feeling this is aimed at somebody and that person isn't stepping forward. Dog? I don't know. Yeah. No. Again, Bob, uh, uh, we're at a Catholic school now, so I can't <laughs> <say that>. <laughs> <laughs> All right, well, okay, you're working at a Catholic school. You're a coach. There are three in this group between the two teams that are coaches. How much of Shannon LeBlanc do you see in yourself as a coach? Do you do things and go, boy, that's Shannon all the way? I definitely try. There's not <laughs> that goes by that I'm like, what drill would Shannon do? Like, if we're flat, what will she say? Like, how would she coach this team is what I try to, like, embody – every single day. And then it's fun because, um, you know, I coached under Joss for years too before I became a head coach. So then it's like I got to absorb her Shannon-ness and then like I sort of molded my own too. So it's like I kind of have like some fun perspectives from that as well. <laughs> yeah, I mean, coming right out of my senior year, I went to Endicott, I went to Bryant, and then I was with UMass Lowell for three seasons while Central Catholic was just becoming a program. So there was actually two seasons where I overlapped as the UMass Lowell assistant and then Central Catholic head coach. Um, the 2010 team was actually my last season. So, you know, what a way to go out with UMass Lowell. Um, I was honored to be there with you ladies. You know, like, Shannon, thank you for keeping me for three years while I was, like, trying to figure out Central. And then just, I mean, watching you girls and being a part of that was, I mean, I got both sweatshirts up. I went and found both of them. Um, but, yeah, I mean, like, everything, the intensity to, to start a program from scratch and not know what you're going to get. Um, and the NBC is very tough. And, I mean, from day one, it was just like, you're going to be the, actually, I have a quote, you, we're going to be the fittest team. I don't care if we lose games, but you will be the fittest. You will not, you know, like you're going to beat them to that ball and you're going to run on that field. I mean, I also probably don't sub as much as I probably should. Um, so there's a lot that I learned from that. <laughs> so, well, and, and I, yeah, I do think <laughs> that, that times have changed. I think my, my ways with these two groups, um, or is was is very different than how maybe mm -hmm. this new yeah, generation is um, is reached. This group that's sitting in front of us, I can you know could yell, scream, maybe a couple of expletives here and there, um, and, they, and they understood what I was saying. Now it, it's a little bit different. So I, I think I hope that they've learned, took the good, um, but I'm sure they they've uh, you know have their own coaching philosophy that's working very well uh, for all their teams because I do think they're all fantastic people and I know they're fantastic coaches as well. Well, I, I, want, to, I want Annie to, to answer the coaching question, but then I'm going to ask you this, Shen. I'll, I'll, I'll mention it now because I do want you to think about it. How have, did these teams in some way change you as a coach or the things you learned in those years that have influenced how you coach today? You think about that. Annie, do you see some of Shannon in you? Um, well, I think that the biggest thing that I try and bring into my programs is like, you could go into Shan's office at any point during the day and say whatever you needed to say and, you know, talk about anything, whether it was hockey or life. But then when you got on the field, it was, <laughs> like Shannon said, it was all business. <laughs> all right, Shannon, you, you've had a moment. Uh, have you changed as a coach? Do, did these teams impact how you coach? 
Yeah, I mean, definitely. I mean, obviously, I think for me, I mean, I think most people know I was also, I'm also an alum of UMass Lowell um, and played field hockey here, obviously. Um, and I didn't have the, the, quite the experience that I, I think I wished for. So m when I took the job, it was really important to me to ensure that I gave, you know, this, you know, group of young women, however long I was going to be there, it was only supposed to be four years, um, a really good experience overall with, with hockey, with a, with a mentorship that I could provide them and really just preparing them for life. In return, I didn't realize how much I was going to learn from them and also what I continue to learn to this day from my current team. Um, they have taught me as much as I, more probably so than I've taught them. And I think really that's, um, that's the difference. So as these young women, cause they're all still young, moved through the program, they, they made sure they communicated with me and what they needed and what they wanted and, and what would help you know, make them great athletes and, and prepared for life. And I think the biggest part was listening to that and really making sure I did that every single day. And I, I think if anything, I, I've stayed the same in that. Um, I would say that my, my current team will say that I'm really tough, but if you ask this group, they will be like, they have it so easy now. Oh my God, Shannon got soft in her old age. <laughs> this, do you do, you don't do that. You don't do that. You don't, you don't do that. So um, I'm gonna guess that I've maybe softened up a little bit my own age, old age, but I, I also think I'm just transforming as a coach because you're always wanting to provide the best environment for that team. And what I could give to the 2005 was a little different than I gave to the 2010, um, different than, you know, probably to the 2020. So I think that's, you know, really important. Now, Jocelyn mentions, as we pointed out, she was a player on the 2005 team. I'd forgotten that she was coaching in 2010. So she has the experience with both teams. So I got to ask you, Joss, how were those two teams alike? And in what ways <clears throat> were those two teams different? Um, I mean, I think the very obvious was that we were all just really gritty and we were hungry and everyone just was relentless. Like we just went out there and we fought and we battled. And then I think the big difference was that individually, there was probably way more talented people on that 2010 team. But Shannon said it. I mean, like you had Liz Day, you had Sammy Meese, you had people who were literally like all of like the player of the years in their conferences, like leading scorers, like that. I mean, when she recruited us in our 2005 team, it was literally like, there's seven people on the team, so you're probably going to start. Like, please come and help us build a program. So please get us 11. We just need 11. I just need four more. We need 11 to play, so you're probably going to be a starter. I mean, honestly, like, you're amazing, and you're going to come and win games. Like, come here and win games. Like, those stuff. And I, obviously, we got it done in 2005, but that's, they were flashy. They were way flashy, but they were yeah. still just as gritty, and, and like, you know, they just went out there. It was a fun team. And I do, you know, there's so many players too, who just like progress, like to see the progression and the improvement of players on that 2010 team that like necessarily in the beginning of the year, you didn't think we're going to make an impact and that they were, I mean, it was amazing just to, to see that all come together. And again, Liz Day, Sammy Macy, like back-to-back -back player of the years. I mean, we were still struggling when we were playing to get like an all conference defensive player. <laughs> so these girls, you know, just the recognition of the program obvious also elevated. So it was really good to see that happen in all those years too. Now I'm, I'm the oldest one in the group here. I'm 68 years old. When you're my age, are you gonna think back over these seasons? Is there one thing that will stand out in your mind? Is it the national championship? Is it, is it something else? Is there something you'd tell your grandkids or, or a friend that you'd never told them about these years? Um, yeah, I mean, I think... Okay, go ahead, sorry. Yeah, I mean, for, for me, it's, it's, I mean, yeah, it's winning a national championship, but it's the friendships. I mean, these, these women are still like some of my best friends. I see them all the time. I know their kids. They're people I call on. They're my confidants. They're, they're everything. And it's, it's like that program and Shannon brought us together and gave us that. And I know there's so many alumni who are on this webinar and listening and who, um, you know, gave us so much support 
when, when each team won, you know, it couldn't be every team, but it, you know, it's, it was everyone coming together throughout all the years that made all of all these teams that made these two teams win. It wasn't just like these two teams, right. It was everybody mm -hmm, right. who was part of this program. And um, I'm so grateful for everyone um, who's just been a part of my life and, and for Shannon, it's just amazing. And like, and Shannon feeds me interns, like or her team, like I have so many interns for my, for my small business. And it's so great to still be connected to, to the current team. Um, but I'll let someone else talk because I could talk all night. <laughs> <laughs> oh, someone else talk. Yeah. yeah were you going to say, oh, sorry. I mean, Joss, don't you agree that, I mean- Oh, I do, but Shannon was gonna talk, so I was gonna let oh, her- Oh, well, no, I, I was gonna say that um, memories that I'll take away was the 2010 post-game celebration. That will be something that when I- Oh, I heard about that. This day, oh, Sammy, oh my God. one of the best- I know there's a crew, <laughs> there's, a, there's a parent crew on this webinar listening that had just as much fun as their daughter. Unlike the 2005 team that had a 14 hour bus ride home, the 2010 team got to celebrate in a very different way. Somebody asked that question before um, <laughs> the comment or whatever it was was shut down. <laughs> How do you celebrate a national championship? I was <laughs> really going to say, I'll let you know at the next alumni <laughs> yeah. game, but 2010 was way better than 2005. Yeah, 2010, um, those are the memories. And oh my God. And we've heard it time and time again too, is that just, you know, we also have this great group of parents and alum support. And I know, you know, uh, Tay mentioned, you know, we, we 2005 and 10 teams, but they didn't get there without the help of the 2004, three teams and the 2007, eight, nine teams. And it's just, it's really interesting um, when you said that Tay to remind us that really there's such a big group of women that were really part of history making. And maybe they weren't on the roster for that you know, the national championship, but they certainly did a tremendous amount of work of building our culture um, and, and building our sort of, of, of the, the found, and setting the foundation. And really what makes us different, and I do think that you all agree, is that how everybody celebrates our success, whether it's a game, alumni game, it's, you know, by a text or hiring interns, we still celebrate each other's success. And I really think, Bob, for me, that will be something in, in you know, when I'm 68, which isn't that far away, um, is that I will remember just the really how different we are as a program that they continue to celebrate team successes 15 years later, 16 years later, 17 years later, you know, it's pretty darn amazing. And in my old days, I would say it's a damn amazing. It's pretty damn amazing. Um, and, and really that's, I think, what's most impressive about this program as a whole. Yeah, I mean, the alumni group is so close. Um, even, you know, my husband went to UMass Lowell and he's just like, I've never seen anything <laughs> like this. I mean, we don't even have to know people. We just show up to games and we're here. And then, you know, we have the little tailgates after. And I mean, all the- It's just gonna be crazy. Games. We're gonna be at every game. <laughs> Yeah, like, yeah, that's it. Like, and if you win, I'm traveling to wherever it is because it sounds like I missed a good time in 2010. Oh yeah, 2010. Well, to piggyback, to piggyback on what you guys have said, um, I feel the more time that's gone on, it's been 15 years, the more time goes on, I just respect Shannon and Carrie and Aaron. Um, just a million times greater from when I played for you guys and your <laughs> dedication to the sport. So um, sport. I feel extremely grateful that I got to play for you. Well, Courtney mentions it. And does time change how you view uh, your playing days as you get further from it? Does it change in your mind? <laughs> Makes me yes. more appreciative <laughs> like, of those times. I mean, now coaching, there's so many times that I wish I could just grab a stick and jump on the field and play. And like, I always say to my kids, I'm only at the high school level, but you know, it's just like, just embrace it. <laughs> every single year, every single season, I feel like it gets harder almost to not be able to play. And so it's just every, every year that goes by, I'm more and more appreciative of those moments, of those bonds, of that connection, of that competitiveness, of all of it, of just being in that moment. It's just, it was everything. I think this, this question might've been asked earlier, but. Uh, I'm told that, that Stacy Kraft, who was on, I guess, graduated, I think, with 2004, uh, just missed 2005. But she asked, 
at least for the um, 2010 team. Perfect season. But what was the most difficult game? In the um, blizzard game. <laughs> what game? Um, when we played in a blizzard. Like, literally, it was a blizzard. And there was, like, <laughs> what, how many, like, four inches of snow oh, yeah. on the ground. And they had to, like, take breaks to shovel the line so we could see. That was tough. Mm -hmm. I just that that sticks out in my mind, you know. I'm sure there was a lot of tough moments, but that was I remember. Sammy, what about you? What what was your most? Um, I would say one of the Merrimack games. <laughs> I was uh, tagged. <laughs> I was really frustrated. I I just remember really being really frustrated uh, personally. Those games, and they were really good our senior year. Um, I don't know how many times we played them. I'm trying to remember. Um, but I definitely remember being a bit frustrated. I, I agree. I think that's the um, the rivalry that we don't, you know, we kind of focus in on, on Stonehill quite a bit, but Merrimack in the late days of 2010, 9, 10, you know, they were really an excellent program and uh, they gave us a run for our money every, every time we played them. So I, I don't disagree with that. Yeah. We I don't stole wanna... one, I think, from them, didn't we, Annie? Yeah. I want to say. And now the funny story is Annie's from a family of Merrimack grads, and recruiting her, I had to like convince her parents to allow her to come to a state <laughs> and steal her from Merrimack and the Catholic institution that it was. She's the black sheep of the family. She was like, never, and now she's at Stonehill, so it's kind of funny how the world comes back to the Catholic, you know, together. Mm -hmm. uh, but that's Merrimack certainly was one of our. Uh, big rivals in tough games for sure. I, I will note, and I don't know, and this is the last thing I'll ask. Um, don't know if you've thought about it. I mentioned it earlier, how 2005 and 2010 helped build the foundation to lead us to where we are now. Do you think that, do you ever think, boy, I'm a part of the reason that that uh, university is now entirely division one because of what we accomplished? Do you, I look at the groups as pioneers, if you will, frontiers men or frontiers women. Um, do you think of it in those terms or maybe not ready to look at the big picture? Now I do. I'm glad I could help. <laughs> no, I mean, I think when it was, we joke about how long the bus ride was home and <laughs> there was no parades, but I mean, the school put on this really big thing for us. We, you know, we got all our sweatshirts. We had like our ring ceremony. Um, we were on North Campus and there was this whole big rally, um, you know, celebrating it. And again, I mean, we were literally on this ginormous poster on the side of one of the buildings in, you know, North Campus. And it was, it was really made a big deal about, and I think yeah. we're all very well outspoken, well-spoken, confident women. And I think, yeah, to be known as the first na you know, women's national championship, I mean, that was just an amazing thing. And, and it's something I think maybe Joanne, I don't know, I won't remember who said it, but it was like one of those things, I mean, I'm still so proud of it, about it and talk about it all the time. And like, you know, Taylor said, I still wear my ring and yeah. it's just, yeah, no, it was awesome to be one of those people. We didn't know we were doing that, but I mean, if you had asked me if there was a women's national championship before us, I probably wouldn't have known the answer. <laughs> but when we, when we made it, it was like, that's amazing. <laughs> yes. <laughs> Yeah, and I think to like to add to that is like, I think like we said before, it was like all the teams like adding up like every single season that like made UMass Lowell like be on the map, you know, like, and become division one and realize like you could be at that level. So I think it was every single team that was that that from when Shannon started that she just kept building and building and building. And that was the momentum to D1. We too, as our freshmen, we had no seniors. So I think a special thing that I kind of, not like that we forget about, but we had no seniors. We had the three juniors, right? We had Laura mm -hmm. and Hey Mendoza and Martha Marsden, and we had two years with them. So the sophomore year, we added more freshmen, but we still had that, we had that, you know, junior, sophomore, freshman class of girls that we all still then, you know, went to that next level. And I think that yeah. that also really helped us build a strong foundation. And that soft, our sophomore year, you know, that's when we got our first NE10 championship and we um, kind of started that whole NE10 run. So yeah, that's true. Yeah, that was so those, you know, all of those classes before us, those juniors, those um, sophomores, that was huge for all of us. And they're, you know, we're all, they're all some of our biggest alumni fans. <laughs> Whenever we have these little things, you know, 
they're on there. Martha, I know. Um, Stace, okay. you know, yeah, okay. Pay. They're all in Pay's brother. So <laughs> love you we love you. <laughs> I suspect that that probably is, is where we'll wrap this up. Let me say for me, it was an honor to be asked to take part in this. Uh, for me as well, it's, it is a pleasure to see all of these smiling faces as you appear on as various tiles on my uh, computer screen. Uh, a lot of you I haven't seen in an awful uh, long number of years, but it's a delight to take part. It's a delight to see you all. Um, I thank everybody for uh, being involved. Again, our thanks to the 2005 panel uh, was Taylor Kloss, uh Pitzinger, uh, Jocelyn Mraz Wilson, uh, Courtney Hill Metcalf and uh, Joanna Deleuze Montero, the 2010 panel or 2010 team represented by Sammy Macy, uh, Liz Day, Annie Hansberry, and again, uh, Katie and Air Fearman had planned on being with us and uh, the schedule couldn't work out, but we thank her uh, for, for trying to make that work. I thank all of you for being involved. Uh, Shannon LeBlanc, uh, you get to be on two panels. Uh, absolutely terrific. And again, I'm very much honored to have been asked to take part in this. Uh, our thanks to uh, John Boswell and um, for and Ashley Robbins, but John for his kind of technical expertise on this, because I got to tell you, I may be old and wise, but I'm a computer idiot. Mm -hmm. So uh, thank you, John. Uh, Ashley Robbins for, for holding my feet to the fire and keeping all of this in line. Uh, we thank you. And the tip of the hat to I believe it was the Jean d'Arc Credit Union that helped make all of this possible. Mm -hmm. With that, Bob, I thank you. Yeah, I, I, Bob, just so, uh, before you close it out, I, I do want to thank you for joining us. Um, I also, you know, want to make sure that I thank all the all the all the panelists. Um, such a great crew, and obviously, you know, I love seeing you, and and even if it's in Zoom, but I, I prefer to see you in person. So I can't wait for that day to come. Um, I really want to make sure I think we had a lot of awesome people uh, that that watched this tonight too, that were really big parts of our success um, down to our sports information directors um, it, for both and, and Chris O'Donnell was here and Shan Dove I believe was on and E Liz um, so when we have these people um, that were you know just as invested in our programs our athletic trainers um, you know, there's a lot of people behind the scenes that, that help our success that, you know, obviously we, the coach gets celebrated in the, in the athletes, but we had amazing support staffs of assistant coaches. Um, and I feel really, really thankful that the many people that have come through um, this program um, as a part of it, whether they were an athlete or a support staff, really are the ones that we, we thank and are grateful for and, and sort of those, those unsung heroes. So, um, you know, taking the time out of a Friday night. Well, thank you. You're super busy. I know a, a lot you have going on um, as coaches and, and, and moms and employees. And we have a couple nurses that were unable to make and, and working in healthcare tonight that would have been on the panel. But I really want to make sure that um, that you all know how grateful I am for you taking the time out. And then for, for those that have joined us, just we're, we're the luckiest. We, we have one of the best programs and the best alumni groups and the best support groups in the country. There's no question. And I always tell people that, and I do believe that. And it's um, something that I'm super proud of as an alum, not, not just, not as a coach, but as an alum of UMass Lowell. We're a special institution. Uh, we bring strong women. Um, we raise them and then we send them out into the world to do great things. So super proud of all of you on this panel, super proud of all of those that are listening, and very, very grateful for the opportunity um, that UMass Lowell has given me to, to have a, a touch in all of these lives. So um, with that said, I will, uh, we'll can close this out, but Bob, thank you um, for doing this um, out of retirement. Very, very fortunate to have you and all your wisdom, so thank you. Thank you. You're very welcome, and as I say, sincerely, I am honored to be asked. <laughs> Yes, thank you, Bob. Awesome. Thank you. thank you so much. <laughs> hey, thank you everyone for joining us. And uh, you know, Shannon and Bob nailed it. I don't have really anything else to add. We will have a recording of this that we'll be able to share. So for anybody who wasn't able to attend, they can relive uh, what they missed here and uh, mm -hmm. what they, they were a part of. And uh, you know, thank you to all the panelists. The, you, the positive is you don't have to shake off the Saturday night cobwebs for. <laughs> <laughs> so I really appreciate everybody's time, and uh, we hope you're able. To, people are able to join us. The series will continue with men's soccer and Christian Figueroa.
Ted Priestley next uh, Friday in women's soccer on November 6th with Mira Melvin. Awesome. Thank you very much to everybody for attending. We'll see everyone soon.